Recently, Huawei invited me to a trip to China to explore the R&D labs in Shanghai and the headquarters in Shenzhen. We also had a look behind closed doors at one of their assembling lines and a device testing facility. We had great fun exploring Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Had awesome meals at fancy restaurants and drinks with a view on the top of skyscrapers. Our journey started with a direct flight from Vienna to Beijing. We got picked up at the airport and had a quick break at our nice hotel before heading to the Forbidden City, an enormous complex with more than 950 buildings. On day two, after an amazing Beijing duck the night before, we went to see and climb up the Great Wall. Unfortunately, our plans got crossed and we had to take the train instead of the plane to Shanghai. Our second stop on this trip. Day three started with a tour to the gigantic Huawei R&D Center. The building is said to be almost one kilometer long and hosts up to 10,000 people. We had a tour showing their work in different fields, ranging from smart cities to drone programs and their ambitious effort to establish the new mobile standard 5G, which will indeed be another leap for IoT and the more and more connected world. 5G will enable up to 100 times the speed of LTE and new solutions for many fields from agriculture to smart city lights. These are being developed in their labs. But it's not only about faster download speeds, 5G will also have extreme low latencies. The low ping will also improve remote operated vehicles a lot and make it possible to control them in almost real time. Besides all that, 5G should also come with 90% less power consumption. We had plenty of time to dig deeper into this amazing future where technology and our surroundings become smarter and smarter. I enjoyed how open everything seemed and how they would answer every question, totally different to my preconception. The next day we already woke up in Shenzhen, one of the fastest growing cities. 30 years ago it was a small fisher village, now it's home to more than 12 million people. It's also the headquarter for Huawei and most of the world's electronic products get produced in this area. Huawei campus is 2 square kilometer big, beautiful design with a lot of green spaces, gardens and even a lake with black swans. But they are already building an even bigger one somewhere close by to keep up with their unstoppable pace of growth in the consumer, telecom and enterprise market. We got an introduction tour in their technology exhibition center and then a private briefing about the history and future of Huawei. What amazes me is the fact that Huawei is still a private company and is owned by its own employees. You might want to check out how big Huawei really is, jump over to our other video on this topic. On campus we also had the opportunity to visit a factory or better an assembly line of Huawei. Unfortunately we weren't allowed to film there, we had to put on factory safety gear and go through security. What lays behind the closed doors is a huge assembly line of telecom switches. The insides were great. Everything there was super clean, automated to a maximum level and machines and stuff were hand in hand. Every product goes through multiple tests and procedures to keep the quality as high as possible and the failure rate at a minimum. Not only the product journey is taken care of, also the workers can give feedback on many occasions. One example is that they can rate how they feel each day. They also have a nap break of about one hour after lunchtime. Everyone of the about 45,000 people on the campus go to sleep for one hour and kick off the afternoon with full power. Motivational quotes on the walls help them to focus and work, work, work. In another building, a bit later, we were able to see how they put smartphones and other consumer devices to a test. From bending to dropping to freezing codes. They test everything extensively before they start mass production. And even later in the process, the quality control never lags behind. Maybe you don't know it, but Huawei doesn't only produce smartphones or, or routers. The consumer business is actually only a small part of their company. And the biggest part is the enterprise and telecommunications business. They serve 170 countries and almost one third of the world population and made around $46 billion sales revenue last year. 
It's quite interesting that they invest around 10% of their revenue back in research and development. That's more than most of the other companies. Besides that, they are now the third largest smartphone manufacturer and sold over 75 million devices. Also, they have released the latest chip, the Kirin 970, which will step up their game with the Mate series, but more on that later this October. After two days in Shenzhen, with so many insights in the future of technology and how a huge company operates, we headed off to Hong Kong to get some amazing food and awesome views before heading home. To summarize my experience, I had a great time visiting Huawei in China and I'm thankful that I got a look behind the closed doors. Huawei is very open with their communications. And if you have any questions, please head down and write me now. I hope you liked this video. Just to make sure they did not pay me to say anything here. They invited me on this trip to understand China and their company better and see what really is going on behind this growing brand. Thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye bye.